Hi, in this video, we're going to take a look at experimental data setup, blocking and stratification. All right, so blocking and stratification are very similar to each other and they can get mixed up very easily. With blocking, we have a covariate that we are not interested in for our study, but we believe that that covariate could have an impact on the response variable, what we're the variable that we're interested in. Now, we need to address this covariate in some way, shape, or form. With blocking, what's happening is that my subjects are coming to me with features of the covariate, and then I'm going to split out my subjects by this measurable covariate that they already have. With stratification, it's similar, but when the, it, it, there's a different approach to this in that in stratification, I'm going to, in my sampling process, I'm going to assign a, a subject to uh, the, the group that fits the criteria that I want, or I'll uh, you know, give a, I'll, I'll control a variable in an experiment for the level that I want. So think of, let's say I have got uh, schools. Let's say we have students. Let's say um, we have, like let's say gender, male, female, and we have a uh, strategy of the course, and then we have test results. All right, so our study is that we are interested in the how studying impacts test results. Well, we believe that gender or sex has an impact on the results. Okay, so an example of blocking is, let's say that I'm gonna go and the entire school is gonna be part of the experimental study, okay? Well, this is a feature of my subjects coming to me. I don't have control over it. I don't have control over you are in or out of my experiment. And there I'm going to assign, you know, about half the males to treatment, half to control, half the females to treatment, half the females to control. All right, now with stratification, now we're gonna, same situation that I've got, you know, the uh, you know format the, of which the students learn and the response here is what I'm interested in. I believe gender has an impact. Now let's say that only a fraction of the students are gonna be part of the study. Well, in this situation, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go and I'm going to select a student and, you know, that's male and put them in control. I'm going to select a student and put them in control. Go, uh, you know, select a student that's a male, put them in treatment. One that uh, select a, a male, put them in control, treatment, control, treatment, control over and over and over. I'm going to do the same thing for female. I'm going to go and you know, randomly select a female put into control, randomly select a female put into treatment, randomly select a female to put in control, randomly select a, select a female to put into treatment. Do this over and over and over. And so in my, the stratification is like a sampling process while blocking is done when, I'm at, when I've basically already got my subjects in hand to work with. All right. So what we're trying to do either way, they're very similar to each other. It's just how do I reach the, you know, the, the, the grouping aspect um, is, is just slightly different. Um, and so what we're trying to do, we're trying to balance out covariates that we believe can have an impact on the response variable. And these covariates are conf confounding variables because we're not interested in them. All right. And so, the, you know, there's a fundamental aspect to design of experiments. And so remember a subject is the level of observation, uh, the entity on which experiments are conducted, people, employees, users, et cetera. We have our treatment and control groups. The treatments involve uh, applying a change or an intervention. Uh, control is the baseline or no change group, or like the default approach that we already have established. A confounding variable is a variable that might cause an effect rather than the treatment. And so, and, and this will be a variable that we actually aren't trying to study. It could just be in the way of reaching what we want. And we could have our assignment method of non-random or random assignment. And a lot of times non-random will come up when I really don't have a choice or because like, let's say I'm, I'm working at a business. We can't shut down the business for an experiment. We have to keep operations going. 
just logistically to execute the study, we're just going to go, hey, a non-random assignment, just so that I can get data to execute. Of course, a random assignment is the gold standard, but that's not always feasible. And so it's better to do weaker data science than no data science at all. My experience is, you know, when people do weaker experiments, weaker data science, they usually end up coming up with better conclusions and results than if they were just, you know, going data-free methods. All right, there are problems with randomization. Remember that if I'm strictly randomizing my the assignments, let's say that I, I just don't even like look at the covariate and I randomize, I could end up having uneven group sizes. And that could you know, lead to problems in getting the full power of my study. Uh, we can also get in, uh, uh, covariate imbalance going on, which it's harder to pick up the full effect of what's going on. We want balance if we can do that. So dealing with known but uninteresting covariates. So when I say known, this is something that is measurable, something that can be identified. Uh, when, so the, the, there's some feature that we believe or suspect could have an impact on the response variable, but we're not interested in it. We're trying to get to some other feature in, in the situation. So blocking aims to reduce, reduce noise by grouping similar subjects, improving the precision of estimated effects within the blocks. And so something about this is that the subjects are already like within arm's reach of me. I don't have to go out and like, you know, sample them. Well, I mean, I will go out and sample them, but um, it, it's not like I have a mechanical process on them. Like, uh, you know, like in the school example, in blocking, if I have the entire school of students to work with, I already have all of my subjects already listed out. In stratification, I, it, this is a sampling aspect. This is a sampling strategy where I go out and I find what I want uh, in terms of the uninteresting covariate, and then I assign treatment or control. All right, so here... Uh, this is one definition that I found from DataCamp. Blocking is a technique to control variability by organizing subjects into groups as blocks based on key characteristics before random assignment. This approach addresses imbalances due to covariates leading to more precise treatment effects estimates. Now, here's the one from Wikipedia. Blocking is the non-random arrangement of experimental units into groups blocks consisting of units that are similar to one another. Blocking reduces known but uninteresting sources of variation between units and thus allows greater precision in the estimation of the source or of variation under study. So one thing to focus in on is that this blocking is something that is not random. Like this is a feature of the subject. And so I don't have like control of this. Uh, if I'm going to use the subject, their covariate value comes along with them. So we're going to split into blocks of size n. You know, you know, we're going to do our best as we can to get equal size, and uh, we're going to randomly split uh, control and treatment, and we're going to do everything we can to fix uneven issues. All right, so let's go through an example. All right, so let's say that I have a pr productivity experiment, and I have uh, so I've got treatment and control. I'm interested in the impact of the treatment and control groups. Now that is what I actually want to know. Now, I believe that the shift that employees work has an impact on productivity. And so I want to account for this, uh, you know, in, in addition to control and treatment. All right, so what I'm going to do is I've got all my employees, they're already morning, afternoon, or evening employees. All right, I, I, that's already established. I am not shutting down my operations for this experiment. Operationally, it's not feasible for me to do a pure random study. Uh, so what I'm going to do, and this is not really an ideal experiment, but I'm gonna take like the first half of a shift and I'm on, on at least on a list, first half is gonna be treatment and the second half is gonna be control or, or vice versa. Actually in the code I do, first half is control, second half is treatment in the code. Um, and so this is not a random assignment. Uh, I could do random assignment within, within blocking, that is possible, but to emphasize 
that this is not a sampling technique. I, I put in a manual assignment of like just the first half is control and the second half is treatment. And that's where that this appears in the code there. All right, so here, I, this is my setup for my data collection. So I have each worker identified. I know their shift and the first half of the afternoon shift is control. The second half of the afternoon shift is treatment. The first half of the evening shift is control. The second half of the evening shift is treatment. The first half of the morning shift is control. The second half of the morning shift is treatment. The shifts are in alphabetical order, by the way. Um, and now this is my game plan before I collect my data. Remember our experimental design and this is not emphasized enough in like textbooks and YouTube videos and blog posts is that this is my game plan. And like really what data I actually get is, is like comes, in, comes out later. I set up my game plan. I set, I stack the deck to get the best experiment possible. Then I go out and I collect my data. So to emphasize that I leave this column as all empty values because I haven't collected my data yet. I've just come up with my game plan of how I'm gonna measure things. Now I'm gonna go out and I'm going to measure everybody's productivity. And I'm just gonna say it's you know random normal with a mean of five standard deviation of one, just as a filler, just to hold the spot. And then I'm gonna run through my analysis and just to visualize it, just to give some idea of what's going on, I'm gonna go ahead and visualize the empirical distributions. Now I know, because I, I, I wrote the code, I know what the results are going to be, that there's not going to be a significant difference. But, you know, if this was a real life experiment, I would run through the experiment, I would collect the data, um, I would then do the analysis, and maybe, maybe not. Um, the, the emphasis here in this video is the pre-data collection to be able to make sure that after I'm done collecting my data, I get as impactful of results as possible for as little work as possible. I want to reduce bias, reduce uh, variability. I want to account for all possible criticisms of my experiment. All right, and so here I'm just looking at the distribution of the three, and these are all pretty close to each other. I don't see a heck of a lot of difference. There is a little bit, of course, right? I'm random number generation. There's gonna be a difference in there. Now, when and here's for treatment and control. All right, so now for stratified randomization. All right, now in this situation, I'm not using every single employee that I have. I, I'm gonna come up with a game plan and I'm going to randomly pick an employee to be you know, control and treatment from each shift. So I'm going to look at my morning shift people and I'm going to randomly pick somebody for morning. I'm going to randomly pick some, some sorry, uh, I'm going to take my morning people. I'm going to randomly pick somebody for control, randomly pick somebody for treatment, randomly pick somebody for control, randomly pick somebody for treatment. And I'm going to do this until I get the sample size I want. Then I'm going to move over to the afternoon group. The afternoon, I'm going to pick randomly pick somebody for control, randomly pick something somebody for treatment randomly pick somebody for control, randomly pick somebody for treatment, and over and over until I have the sample size I want. Now, not every employee is in my experiment, and then I'm gonna go on to evening, and there I'm gonna randomly pick somebody to be in control, randomly pick somebody to be in treatment, and I'm gonna do that over and over and over until I get the sample size I want. And so this is a sampling, this is me going out and finding an employee that fits the feature that I want to make sure I have balance in my design. If I was doing a, an experiment in a lab, I would just control this, the, you know, these aspects uh, with individual people. I have to like pick somebody. All right, and so you'll notice that in the code here, I'm using random assignment on this to assign treatment or control all the way through. All right, and so I've got that going on. So now let's go ahead and simulate collection of data. And I'm just doing the same code I did before uh, just to uh, fill in the gaps. Remember that all of this relates to my, my, my setup, my game plan for collecting data. And this is basically setting it up so that I have the most impactful data I can possibly get. 
And then I'm going to do my analysis. Once again, the analysis really isn't meaningful because I did random number generation. I know it's all the same distribution. All right, so blocking controls variability by grouping similar subjects that are already like on my list together before I, you know, uh, you know, before we work things out. Trafication is a sampling process where I sample to make sure that I have things balanced. All right, well, that's all I've got for you. Life is short, do math.